Hi, and welcome to Dealing With Life. I'm Tom Baker, author of One Dog's Faith, and we do this every single week. We talk to people who have been struggling and found victory and a deepened faith through the process, and we also talk to people who are are called to help others. Everybody is struggling with something. Yours, however difficult, is important. It's important to others, and most importantly, it's important to God. He can be your strength. But remember also that others are struggling. You don't have to look far at all to find somebody who is struggling more than you. That's what our purpose today is. Elaine Streno with Second Harvest is with us. Hi. Hi, how are you? Nice to have you along. Thank you. Uh, Second Harvest is such an important program to this area. And I'm so glad to have you here to help uh, uh, clarify what you do and clarify who you're helping and also how we can help. That'll be, that'll be the purpose and the, uh, the to-do list for today's show. But first, Elaine, um, just give us a rundown of what Second Harvest is. Okay, so it's uh, part of a Feeding America organization. There are 200 food banks in the country that okay. do what we do in East Tennessee and um, we kind of customize it for what the needs of East Tennessee. Okay. So essentially, Tom, it's um, an organization that's providing 1.1 million meals a month through its six different feeding programs in 18 counties. 1.1 million Correct. meals. Oh, my word. Correct. So what we do is partner with agencies. Um, you had Bert on last Monday um, or Glazen. last week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he, uh, we provide food to CARM in two different programs. Okay. Uh, there's about 500 schools or agencies that we provide food to. You were in our warehouse. You saw it. I have. So we're really a distribution center of sorts, but we are feeding the hungry in East Tennessee in the 18 counties we serve. And I did not realize that you provide food to CARM uh, and, yes. and the like. That, that's, yes. That's a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of work. And, and I saw your warehouse. It's absolutely huge it is and it's full of stuff but i'm sure that stuff goes in and goes out rather quickly it does yes so 18 counties Mm -hmm. um that includes um okay so we go up to scott uh county okay we don't go past the kentucky state line we go southeast to hamblin no i'm sorry southeast to monroe northeast to hamblin and west to cumberland and our six different feeding programs, they all look different. They all feel different. Mm-hmm. But we are supplying food to 500 entities that feed the hungry directly. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I know that takes a lot of money. And it it takes does. a lot of volunteers. And we'll get into how people can help. But just describe to me the, the process, um, where the food comes from. Or, I mean, how, how does it work? So the basic food bank concept, the whole reason our network was started was because so much food was being thrown away in our country. Right. So Second Harvest started in East Tennessee in 1982, and it was all donated product from the country, from, from food industries in the United States that was going to throw away a tractor trailer load of cereal that ended up giving it to our network. Sure, sure. A lot of food Repurpose. thrown away. Correct. So they thought the food industries really wanted it to go to one place, a warehouse in a community that was food safety, clean. You know, you have to have that, that food safety component oh, sure. is huge. Yes. Uh, anyway, and that's how the whole network started. So what was once one program in the Knoxville community has now become six okay. because we uh, had to start, we, we started buying our inventory because the donated product started to diminish. So the food sourcing program and then our food rescue program that does still pick up donated product, that came along. And as we customized the need for East Tennessee, you saw the mobile pantry. Yeah. We have the food for kids program. We have the rural route. And we just a few years ago started a senior feeding program. So it depends on the program. 
what it looks like, but that's essentially how Second Harvest works. Okay. So, and I'm sure you have people, I know Bush Beans is one of your big supporters. You have companies that, that probably sell at a, at a discounted rate uh, food to you. Or donate, that? right. Okay. Yes, very okay. much. Um, they're very good to us. We have ConAgra and Newport. Um, the food industries that we have in East Tennessee do support Second Harvest. Okay. Now, I noticed one thing that, that, that just really stuck with me is Bush... Uh, they had beans that didn't have their their logo on it. Right. They're, I mean, it was just obviously less expensive to make that. Uh, is that s- specifically for you? Well, it what they, they call those shiners. It's an industry term that I didn't know until I started at Second Harvest. Uh, shiners when I get hit by a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah, this, one, <laughs> this one's a can without a label. Gotcha. And it just depends on how the production went. They might have wanted to give us a pallet, but sometimes it's just they've had an overrun or they're starting a new product and it's not going well. It just depends okay. on, on what the food industry, and of course I've learned this in the 23 years I've been there, um, they're, they're, it's, a, it's a very interesting industry because they want to start a new product, but they'll test it in a particular market. Sure. If it doesn't go well, we'll get it, okay. which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and there aren't that many food industries in our 18 counties, but the ones that do are really good to second harvest. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I also witnessed is, and you talked about it a little bit, the mobile pantry, mm-hmm. uh, but also the uh, fairly new introduction of fresh foods. Well, we are really tr- focused on the healthy component. We know that a third of the people that we're feeding are dealing with a lot of health issues. Right. Some don't even know what to do with a fresh piece of produce. So we, are, we have a kitchen at Second Harvest. We are trying to teach our agencies healthy cooking that, of course, will be turned around and, and hopefully teach the clients. We had fresh milk, um, dairy milk. We had a milk drive in memory of a wonderful man who was very uh, committed to helping Second Harvest. So we had fresh milk and we have produce one great story last thursday we got a whole tractor trailer load of watermelons oh boy we were so excited perfect time of year for that yes and it went out in uh three days to agencies without any charge at all because we wanted everybody that could handle the watermelons and to get it to the needy um and it went really well it, it you just know ne- you never know what's coming in to right. second you harvest. Just, when it comes, you yes. figure out what to do with it. That's right. right. So the watermelons, uh, I guess, that, that, that people, you said no charge? Well, oh, absolutely. Now, it depends on the program. If we're buying the inventory, we have to charge the agency 100% of what we're sure. spending. But it's a whole lot less than um, if they're going to the grocery store because we're buying a tractor trailer load of something, gotcha. which means the cost substantially goes down for the agency. Um, they have to have their nonprofit status to get Second Harvest food. They we cannot distribute to um, profit Retail, agencies sure, exactly. Sure, it makes sense. But um, if they have a nonprofit status and they're feeding the hungry in any way at their organization, then they can become a Second Harvest agency. So, uh, and what I witnessed recently with you is is a church mm-hmm. uh, out in an outlying county uh, that has worked with you for many years, and they just they they basically operate it. You have volunteers, or you have people, I don't right? Know volunteers, um, and then the, the 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 people from that area just somehow know that. On this particular day, uh, we're we're serving. We're, we're yeah. There's a mobile pantry. It's become a very popular program, and one we're really looking at um, differently because we're trying to get more healthy food on it. When we get donated product, it's um, a challenge because a lot of times it is junk food. Ah, uh, okay. And and I tell this to many people. We get Christmas candy in February, and I'm talking nationally. I'm not talking locally, okay. but we do that too. It's but it's just it's, it's nationwide. This is correct. an issue. Yeah, Hershey's product. You know, all the Hershey's chocolate that is sold at Christmas. Once Christmas comes and goes, they give it to our network. Uh, Valentine's same way. They have uh, Oreos. Have um, spring. W- what's the uh, March Madness? They have March Madness Oreos. Okay. Did you know this? No, I didn't. It, yeah, we didn't either until we got the cookies. So, you know, you just, it, it's an amazing, <laughs> it's an amazing thing because 
still 30% of our inventory, the food is donated. But most of it is stuff that we really would not want to distribute to pantries. Now, the Boys and Girls Club shops at Second Harvest and the Helen Ross McNabb um, group homes do. And we you know, love to give them treats. But a pantry, we want healthy product. What you saw in that bag going to that needy family, we want healthy stuff in right. there. Right. And, and what I also witnessed is people uh, were actually explaining what this is mm-hmm. because you, you said a minute ago that that some people had never seen or had had the, the luxury i would call it of having fresh food or something healthy mm-hmm. so goodness i mean you've got a lot to deal with we do we have a staff of 40 people um uh, we're hiring a full-time nutritionist um oh, and, nice. yes we're very excited about that so um it's a challenge and as i shared it's grown a lot and um we have a big budget, was <laughs> was once a small budget, it's now a big budget, but this community is supporting Second Harvest, and we are able to do what we do because of the gifts of this community. You have a lot of media buy-in, and you have a lot of support. Uh, one thing I wanted to, you and I talked about when we were in your facility, uh, it's big and it's beautiful, mm-hmm. and, and you were very quick to point out, wait a minute, <laughs> we didn't build this. Right. This was kind of a God-given gift. Talk and it was. That. Talk about that. Well, we were starting our campaign. We had to relocate from our North Knoxville warehouse. It was flooding. Um, and you we, outgrew it. We totally, we totally outgrew it. So we started our campaign, <laughs> talk about timing, yeah. right when the recession hit. Oh, perfect. Yes. <laughs> so um, we had a very wise board president who said, let's look at already built buildings because you know so many companies went under in that six months. Unfortunate, but it's true. Right. So we started looking at empty buildings within 20 miles of where we once were, and that was um, right off 275. And the company that built that building, um, Walker Supply, um, unfortunately went under. So right. we went Tough in, time in real estate and, and oh, home building. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, lovely people, and we are good friends to this day, but we got this building for half of what it cost. And as you saw, and as every bell and whistle, um, it could any warehouse could ever have. Yeah. I mean, it, it allowed you to put together a freezer area. And, yes. And, and not a freezer like that's in your garage. Right. This is, this is <laughs> uh, I don't know how many square feet. I that think it is. holds 99 pallets. The, the cooler holds 99 pallets and the freezer holds 99. It's, 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 it's huge. It is huge. Yes, it Amazing. is. Amazing. <laughs> what a blessing. And, uh, of course, just the, the area where you can pull trucks up to and load. Right. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's really beautiful. And what I was also impressed with, and, and I don't know if you were touching on this a minute ago, but there's a kitchen area. Yes. Uh, that you had the products donated mm-hmm. uh, and are planning on having demonstrations and cooking lessons. Right, right. Well, again, back to this healthy component. Um, we need to, sh- all the Granger County tomatoes that will be coming in soon, we can make healthy tomato sauce. Um, all of these things that we can try to without sugar, healthy yes. tomato sauce yes. without sugar. Sugar is an enemy. Yes. And so we're just trying to teach the culture of East Tennessee um, what to do with fresh produce. And, 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 and a shout out to all the people who were raised on farms. They know I did. I was, I'm a city girl. So I have I've had to learn myself yeah, what to do. There's instruction with. there. Yeah. Yes, very much so. But um, we are just trying to. Um, Keep everybody away from the sugary drinks, the sugary uh, cookies, and um, especially the people that are dealing with the health sh- health issues that we are these yeah. days. And, and, and a lot of people don't realize that sugar just kills your immune system. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it, 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 as popular as it is in this country, yeah. it ain't good. No, it's not. Mm-mm. And, and uh, so shout out to you guys for uh, really being conscious of that and, and helping the community understand Thanks. it. We'll talk more in just a second. I want to get into your passion. Okay. Because I know you are passionate about all this, and you've been there 23 years? Yeah, it's been a while. Unbelievable. Mm. And, and just it's grown under your, uh, under your watch so well. I want to get into that in just a minute. Okay. Thanks. This is Dealing With Life. I'm Tom Baker, and we'll deal with more in just a minute. Bye. I will carry you through darkness till we see the sun. 
sun again So rest your head and cry your tears Know that I am with you here When you can't live that way Believe me when I say I will You're listening to Dealing With Life. Really glad you hopped on the bus today. I'm Tom Baker, author of One Dog's Faith. That's a book about life, about trust, about worrying through the eyes of a dog. If you're a dog lover or a worrier or a little bit of both, uh, I think you'll like it. It's available at uh, Amazon, uh, Cokesberry.com. It's available at BarnesNoble.com. Locally, uh, at Long's Drugstore. One of my favorite uh, uh, landmarks here in town and also a Christian bookstore, Cedar Springs. With me today, Elaine Streno with Second Harvest. It's been a fascinating conversation so far about what you guys do. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Um, what I want to get into, I know you're very passionate about this program, hmm. and you have been there 23 years, seen it from, uh, I don't want to call it a fledgling program, but it was it was, it was a, a low budget, and it mm-hmm. was a, 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 a smaller area that you cover. So talk about your passion. So... Um I had a pretty chaotic childhood, and um, I, my mother was a rock, and she um, made sure that my siblings and I um, had to have a degree to be successful, but we, we needed food once or twice. It was just chaotic. My father was just not stable. Okay. Okay. So I go to school, and I major in social work. I just knew that if I had the opportunity to give back... I wanted to. There weren't any food banks when I went to school. No. Um, I just knew that if I ever had the opportunity to give, like people gave to our family, I would love that opportunity. So spiritually, I, I, I won't even begin to tell you how it all ended up, but I'm at Second Harvest and um, really love the fact that I know what these families go through. Um, you saw the people's eyes at the mobile pantry, the fear. Yeah. I, I, I get it. So um, it's not like I told everybody in my job interview that that's why I'm here. Um, I just, I'm a little more open about it now because um, people, they like to hear a success story. And there are many at Second Harvest. Oh, yes, there are. There has um, to be. There ha- yes. So so I, I tell about it now more than I ever did just because um We need uh, to raise $6 million every year, and I want the community to know that we're making a difference in some people's families' lives because of their gift of a dollar or $10 or whatever they chose to give us. Right. It makes magic. It does. And and there are people everywhere who, who have, for one reason or another, and it doesn't really matter the reason, who are struggling. Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh... You mentioned it uh, at one of the uh, sites where you had a food, a mobile food pantry, uh, just one look and one person's eyes. And the line was wrapped around the building mm-hmm. to get in. I mean, there were there were hundreds. I think I think they ended up feeding 200 uh, in a morning uh, at this at this event. And, and just looking in their eyes, it's 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 frightening mm-hmm. because there's so much fear. You know, it's not just the food, Tom. You know, it's really Um, the security of knowing that you're going to get a meal that night, um, the worry of where your meal's coming from the next day. Yeah. So it's tangled up, um, and I I love your philosophy. Worrying really helps no one, but it's such a human nature to stress out over something that you know is coming down the pike. Right. Worry to me is just the fear of something happening that you don't think you can handle. Right. And and that's such a powerful thing to 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 try to grab onto and um being in a position where you, you have a family, you have children looking up at you going I can't go out and and get this food. How are we going to eat? Mm-hmm. And when it gets down to that basic need of just because you got to eat three times a day, yeah, and, and a lot of people don't. But <laughs> right. I mean, but okay, here's one meal, but we got two more. Where's the next one? Where's it coming from? Yeah, and seeing people going through that line from 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 the beginning of grabbing the buggy, and through through the process of getting things that they see they they need, and then at the end, everyone was smiling. Mm-hmm. 
it was just, uh, it was partly to me, it was partly your volunteers mm-hmm. or the volunteers that were there. Yeah. Uh, just offering a little bit of human care and just uh, just a, a, a smile. And, and then all of a sudden having this buggy full of food. Right, right. So, you know, it's it's a it's a good story because I'm blessed beyond blessed beyond blessed to be where I'm at um, and have a, a wonderful husband and, and God's given me many, many, many gifts. But um, people just like to hear that, yeah, it can happen anywhere. It can. It can happen anywhere. You lose your job. You know, you're all of your... Um, Everything that you thought was working for you is taken away, and yeah. then you're stuck. It can happen really fast. Yes, it can. And it, just knowing that people like you were there, to me, is comforting. Well, thanks. I mean, we have a, a great staff, and um, we get calls every day. People need food. I can't begin to tell you how um, the fear in their voice, you know, just the where do I go? How do I do this? I've never had to do this before. Yeah. Um, a woman needing diapers, which we didn't have, and we were desperately trying to find where, what pantry we um, served could we get some diapers. Uh, you know, it just goes on. And so th- the reason I'm bringing all this up is because I do get people who always ask me, if they were just working for a living, they wouldn't need Second Harvest. Well, there are people that are working and they do need second harvest. They're not making enough for their family at that time. Right. Well, I mean, there's medical issues. Absolutely. There's whatever. Absolutely. Life can happen. (laughs) Yes, it can. And that's the reason this show's called Dealing With Life, because Mm -hmm. at at, at any moment things can change. And and I think more now than ever, no job is secure. Right. And and the what we're living with, the epidemic of addiction in East Tennessee, the so many grandparents raising their grandchildren because their children are in jail or just oh, addicted. Yeah. Wow. So that's why the senior feeding senior senior feeding program has blossomed, unfortunately, because people really thought they had enough to live on, but then they're given three children that they have to raise, and that's not enough. Sure, retirement was taking care of them just fine. Right. uh, So talk about that program. Well, I'm literally, in the last five or six years, we've noticed how many elderly come with grandchildren on their arms. And so we partnered with Shaz, and um, we are delivering food on the weekends to these seniors. We've got a new pilot program with Ethra in Campbell County that we are going to have a van, an Ethra van, literally be able to deliver groceries to these elderly that live in these rural spots. Wow. Um, And we are very excited about that because in these rural counties, they don't have the centers Knox County does. We have O'Connor Senior Center, and we have multiple senior sure, centers. Sure, But in these rural, rural counties, unless they're a member of a church and the church is aware that they need them, they're all by themselves because their family is not there. And if they're raising children on top of that, it's just scary. So we're real happy to have this program. That's amazing. That's that's really helpful. And that's... Uh, and that's it's an uncertain and, and surprising time mm-hmm. that we have to deal with that, but but you you do you see it all the time. Yes, and and I'm sure that when when people come to you, as Bert Rosen said last week from Carm, and, and it's the same with with you, is they feel like if they have to come to you, they failed. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yes, absolutely. That's why they don't look at you in the face. They're um, they're they're embarrassed. They're mortified, and um, you you want to lift their spirit. Yeah. Bert does a wonderful job of lifting pe- people's spirits, and we try to do that at Second Harvest too. I think so, and and I think once they figure out how easy it is, and that there there aren't qualifications, right? That, that, that if you're hungry, yes. Come. Wow. So. Um, Talk also about the rescue program because I think that's that's really that's really a, a powerful how that works. Well, it's it's really well, the one thing we hang on to to keep the food out of the dumpster. Grocery, all the grocery industries are involved in our 18 county service area, so logistically it's a real challenge. But we are in refrigerated trucks with certified drivers picking up from every Kroger, every Walmart, every Food City, every Publix, Fresh Market. Any grocery store in the 18 county service area, and I hope. Goodness, I had no idea you I know, were doing that. I know, and I hope I didn't miss any. Please don't be mad at me. <laughs> but um, three times a week, 
our refrigerated trucks are at a grocery store in our 18 county service area and and if we pick it up from the walmart in oneida we leave it in scott county we oh, don't good. bring the food back nice except for the meat which we're trying to get to all of our agencies but it's a a wonderful program with healthy product produce meats that um, we distribute to our agencies without a without a fee except for the meat so if we pick up three um, pallets of fresh produce in Walmart at the Walmart in Oneida. It's gone to an agency in Scott County and no cost at all. That's amazing. We're very proud of that. Eight million pounds we picked up last year in just that program alone. Eight million. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of pounds. And, and, and yeah. to keep it refrigerated and yes. get it to where it is, yes. that's a lot. So we're in a minute. I want to talk about your volunteers and your workers and, and how you get this done. Okay. That's amazing. Elaine Struno with Second Harvest is with us. This is Dealing With Life. I'm Tom Baker, and we'll deal with more in just a minute. When you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach, reach out your hand You're listening to Dealing With Life. I'm Tom Baker, and we have been dealing with life through the eyes of Second Harvest today. I'm Tom Baker, author of One Dog's Faith. With me today is Elaine Streno of Second Harvest here in uh, in our Knoxville plus 17 other county area. Correct, yes. Nice, nice to have you along, and, and I really have been enlightened by, by all of the things you do. Talk about your partnerships. That seems to be such a, a big, important thing with Second Harvest. Well, we're very proud of the fact that um, there are 240 plus schools that we provide food to in the Food for Kids Weekend Feeding Backpack Program. That is one of our six programs. 240. Yes. That's a lot. Of, I didn't even know there were that many schools here. Well, good grief. That's a lot of schools. It's shocking, really, yes. that there are 11,000 children getting food over the weekend. 11,000 in an 18 county service area through that program. Wow. And, um, the other partnerships are our pantries that shop at Second Harvest, or like I mentioned before, um, Boys and Girls Club shops at Second Harvest and takes the food back to the kids, Helen Ross McNabb and their group homes, Florence Crittenden. So we're trying to supply food to every 501c3 or, or um, church and slash school that um, can, is providing food to the needy in some capacity. You, you were mentioning Cokesbury. Yes, so Cokesbury United Methodist Church has a very active pantry on Wednesday afternoons. Mm-hmm. They shop at Second Harvest, and they give the food out that afternoon or you know, whenever the pantries are open. Sure, sure. Um, so we're very proud of our collaboration because we are collaborating with 500 entities that are feeding the hungry. And um, 95 cents of every dollar goes to the needy if you want to choose to give to Second Harvest. So it's a partnership. It, it, we're just doing what we want to do for them so they can feed the needy directly. You're enabling God's call to people to help. Yes. I think that's, that's, a, that's a very on-the-surface way of putting that's it. That's a good assessment. But I think that it, what's totally surprising to me about our conversation is that you're providing to the big guys, mm-hmm. to CARM, mm-hmm. to... Uh, to um, Salvation Army. Salvation yeah, Army. Right. I just, that you know, in my head, I never put the two together. Well, that's okay. You are, um, the majority of our service area understands that, and that's why I was so thrilled you came out to our warehouse, and I want to invite anybody listening to just contact Elaine at Second Harvest, and I will give you a personal tour because, well, first of all, how, how could you not be proud of the warehouse? But then you would understand a little bit better of how we work, our 20 trucks go throughout 18 counties and deliver food and pick up food. Yeah, I would highly suggest that, to go go see it for mm-hmm. yourself. You're not shy about showing it off. No, not at all. And, and when you see it, you go, oh my, mm-hmm. this is serious. You guys are in it to win it. I mean, you're trying your hardest to take care of stuff. We're trying our hardest not to be there, but uh, well, that won't be in our lifetime ever. We pray it could. It, yeah, absolutely. 
So talk about, for a second, talk about the volunteers. Okay, so we have um, 20, probably close to 3,000 volunteers that come in at Second Harvest either every week or once a month. Um, groups of Sunday school classes, uh, companies, and they volunteer. They sort food. They put labels on the Bush Brothers Shiners. There you go. Um, we are packing cereal for the Food for Kids program and for the food sourcing program. And you go in that clean room and you put hats and gloves on and you put cereal in a Ziploc bag. And it's saving us a lot of money because if you buy cereal in a pallet size, you're going to it's a lot more expensive sure. to buy the 11.5 ounce yes, yeah, yes, at with, the grocery with store. With all the names on them, all right, the big so, logos. Correct. So we, um, we have a, a tremendous volunteer program. Um, July, well, Tennessee's Promise, a lot of the children that are in the community, Tennessee's Promise program, they come in and volunteer. Um, and we're just thrilled to be able to give them that opportunity. And I think that if a company or an organization is like, you know, I would like to set up our group to volunteer somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think you're a good place. Yes, absolutely. So again, Greg LaRose oversees our volunteer coordinating program. And I didn't mention our phone number, but it's 521-0000, area code 865. And then our emails are on our website, secondharvestetn.org. Right. And and you can go to the website. Absolutely. Uh, and And it really shows... Uh, a lot of what you do and, mm-hmm. and how you do it. So here, here's a here's a question I want to pose to you. Tie your faith into this. Yeah. So I am a very spiritual person. I know that God has had His hand on me my whole life. Second Harvest is not a religious organization, but you, you can have spirituality and work there. Well, but it, obviously <laughs> it's in your heart, right? Well, I mean, the Bible did say feed the hungry. Yes. And um, Jesus said that. First and foremost. Correct. Yeah. So um, it's, you know, again, I didn't know anything about a food bank when um, I graduated from uh, college, but the fact that I can do what we do at Second Harvest and and give back, and, and it hasn't happened often, and you talked about this earlier, but we get letters from people who needed us and now are donating to us. So it, it affected their lives that yeah. much. Yeah. Well, it, yes, it, it meant a lot to them that we were able to provide. And and that's the goal of course is that you just need second harvest temporarily. Okay. That's that, a good thing. It is a very good thing. That doesn't mean people will people will need us until the the end of their life too, but the the success stories are families that just needed us for a couple of weeks able to help and then they were back able to get back on their feet. Yeah. I think a lot of people have the vision of you're just enabling people to Absol- not go out and work. I can't tell you every time I talk publicly, somebody will raise their hand. If they just work for a living, you wouldn't need to be there. And they are working. Some. Some are not. Um, some programs, um, some are on disability. Some are mentally ill. Some are addicts. They will not be able to work until they are healed from their addiction, and some mentally ill people will never be able to work. Right. We are there for them. So I met a guy at one of your uh, events and, and just heard a little bit of his story, but it just touched me so much. He worked on, uh, I want to think it was Norris Dam. Wow. And um, he was part of a crew mm-hmm. that was up on a lift on the side of the dam, which you would never find me in the first place. <laughs> I wouldn't, but, but anyway, uh, the, the uh, thing they were on failed, and I think he was the only survivor. Rachel told me about him. Okay, and, and it was very powerful. Very much. Um, and uh, he uh, was severely injured, but, mm. but you know, recovered partly from the injury, but is on disability. Sure. And disability just does not cover the living expenses. And so you're there to help. Right. Right. Wow. I'm very proud to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our food rescue program delivers food to some of the KCDC housing where the mentally ill and the, um, disabled are living together. And, um, they get a box of food from our food rescue program every week. And you go out there and you watch that program, and that's where I want to take the people who challenge me on, you really wouldn't need to be there After if you everybody say, was. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, that's what I say on the inside. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just to see, some people will not ever be able to work, period. It's just, that's, that's the, the truth and, of it. And their families are not capable of being able to provide a living for them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, um, 
respond to this. <laughs> um, uh, when you're driving in your car and you look on the side of the road at, at an intersection, you see somebody that looks desperate, has a sign that says, need help. Um, some would say, um, get a job. Some would say, yes. uh, you know, they're just scamming. But what's your what's your take? Well, oh gosh. So, um, my brother, uh, he died of a crack addiction. So, when I say my childhood was crazy, it was crazy. Oh. And um, I do not give to people on the side of the road. Okay. Because um, there are programs that feed them. They just don't want to go there. They don't want to go to CARM and be healed of their addiction. They'd rather beg. And it's very successful for some of them. Wow. But my brother ended up, he, he, he passed away, and he was a wonderful man until he became an, a crack addict. But he was doing everything he could to get that dollar. Um, and, and so he... And it, not face... And not, and not face um, healing of... Well, the healing is scary. Sure, sure it is. And, and what happens in an addiction... They, it owns you. It controls you. Yeah. You do nothing but think about that addiction. Does it break my heart to pass the person that's begging for money? Absolutely. Yeah. It breaks my heart. I want to give them $10, but I know what they're going to do with it, and I will not buy into that. That's interesting, and that's, that's why I wanted to ask you that, because I know you have a unique perspective on that. Well, it's a personal thing, very personal for yeah, me. But, 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 the, but the reasoning behind it, I totally get. There are programs that will help them. They just need to get there. I would drive them to the program if they promised me they'd enroll. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. Elaine Streno with Second Harvest, uh, and we, we've got just a little more time to, to sure. in a second, we'll talk about how people can help. Okay. Because that's, that, that's an integral part of what you guys do. This is Dealing With Life. I'm Tom Baker, and we'll deal with more in a second. But if it's true, you use broken things, then here I am, Lord, I'm all yours. Listening to Dealing with Life. I'm Tom Baker, author of One Dog's Faith, uh, a book about life, faith, and worry through the eyes of my dog, Mango, her perspective. <laughs> and a- a- Elaine Streno with Second Harvest is here with me. And she, you're a dog lover. I am crazy about our dog. Dogs yes. just know. They do. They, they really do. They, they just look at you and say, I care. I don't know if anybody else does, but I do. I love you. Just feed me. <laughs> yes, exactly. Second Harvest, we've been talking so much, and I've, just, I've gained so much knowledge about what you do and, and the people that you help. Now, let's talk about how people who are listening can help you. Well, our website does tell a pretty good story of what we do. It's secondharvestetn.org. Um, if you choose to volunteer, you can sign up on our website. If you would like to donate, we would appreciate it very much. We do have to raise $6 million every year. And guess what? July 1st, our new fiscal year starts. Starts ground zero. Right, exactly. Oh, boy. Um, so this is, a, we, we made our budget, so we coast this week. And nice. We start all nice. over. Nice, one yeah. whole week. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, and I, I want to, again, say thank you to anybody who has given a second harvest. We are very grateful to you for your support. We're very good stewards of your gifts. 95 cents of every dollar goes directly to the needy. And I do want to invite everyone um, who wants to tour the warehouse to please contact me. I'd, I'd love to give you a tour. Yeah, it's amazing. Now, now break that down for a second. When you say 95% of what somebody gives. Of a dollar. How's that possible? Well, we um, are very efficient. We have um, our six different feeding programs. We are... Um, uh, driving food everywhere, picking food up everywhere. When you crunch the numbers, that's what it comes to. And i um, very proud of that. Yeah, that's amazing. And, yes. and I, I will say, I've, I, I, in, in the last week when, I, when, I, when we agreed to have you uh, come on the show, uh, everywhere I look, every time I go out in the car, I see a second harvest truck. Well, there's 20-something trucks on the road. So, yeah. And in the old days, I just have to throw this out, 
When I started, we could have volunteers drive trucks. Well, guess what? It's 23 years later, and volunteers can't drive a truck anymore. Not Our laws will yeah, not allow that. And the insurance company probably won't either. No, no. Thank you, Schaefer Insurance. So <laughs> um, we have drug-tested CDL drivers, and that costs a lot of money. Yeah, they're not free. No, they're not. And um, so that's one of the reasons we're able to do what we do because of the efficiency rating of um, buying a tractor trailer load of food and sorting it and distributing it out to the needy in that way. And we said it before, but I want to say it again. If, if you or your organization is looking for a worthwhile and also rewarding place to volunteer, to send your group, uh, how do you, so you go to the website to do that? Uh, and Greg LaRose, he's the person who coordinates that. And um, there's so much fun that is had. Um, sure. Because, because everybody's competing, who who can pack the most cereal in the Ziploc bag? If we have a, a church group, you know, they're singing hymns and packing. So um, they have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. And um, it's a it's a pleasant environment to be able to volunteer in. And we're uh, again because of our building. Um, just thank God every day for that one. Yeah. It's just an amazing facility. <laughs> I mean, there's one thing that, that just shrink wraps. It's a, it's a right. machine that shrink wraps. Right. I mean, I'm easily impressed, but, but that <laughs> impressed me. Well, yeah, that's fun. And I need to mention that we are in Maryville, right past the airport, um, 18 miles from downtown Knoxville. And um, you can get there real easily to our facility. And again, uh, would love to show you around. Elaine Streno. Second Harvest, uh, just just a, a, an amazing, uh, helpful organization that that is that, that is involved in, in probably every part of this community. Yes, I think so. I mean, I certainly love the letters we get from people who I don't know, but they got a bag of food and the Food for Kids program, and um, it makes a difference. But we couldn't do it without everybody's support. Um, we have to raise a lot of money every year to be able to do this. So. Yeah. We're yeah. grateful to this community for allowing it. Your partnerships and the community's involvement make it work. Right. God mm. bless you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for what you do. Thanks. And don't forget, uh, as their 35th anniversary celebration, Second Harvest is hosting Peter Cetera July 27th at the Knoxville Convention Center. Tickets are available now. Go to the Second Harvest website for more info. This is Dealing With Life. We do this every single week with the single purpose of making sure you know that you're not alone. God is here, ready to send his hand down for you to grab. And also, you're not alone because people around you care and also are struggling right beside you. There are people who are here to help. I pray that you see God's glory shine and know that he is more powerful than any struggle there is. It's